Welcome, everybody, to a Nerdcore interview uh, where I'm uh, the new title for this whole series that I do as a host for the Nerdcore is uh, it's four for four menu where I come in and ask four questions uh, and hopefully get four answers. Sometimes we may get more. Uh, but today we have young men Kim. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Uh I try my best to to um, get the names right beforehand practice, you know, um, and yeah, I mean, today we are re- uh, basically slash reviewing and interviewing the director for Dawning, a thriller, a psychological thriller uh, that deals with um some mental health and trauma with the guests. I mean, well, I'll, I'll, I'll allow you to kind of just go over that film. Yeah, I, I want. I want to see how you how you describe it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would describe it definitely as a psychological thriller, as well as a kind of uh, leaning in the horror aspect, but definitely a um, a coming of age, honestly, because okay. a lot of it is dealing with what I said uh, and what you would see as a synopsis is dealing with trauma and kind of realizing some of the problems that one might deal with or even uh, seeing it from a uh, because well I will spoil it for the people hopefully you guys have seen it and have gotten the chance to see it but basically by the end we realize we kind of viewed uh, the majority of the film through the eyes of the main protagonist until we realize her vision or her reality of the world is kind of distorted uh, right and then we see the realities through people in her life um, so that's where the coming of age kind of comes through is where she kind of went through this whole journey and experience that she didn't realize she was uh, like non, uh, not in really grounded in reality. And just by the end of it, kind of like, oh, like this really happened. I saw her deceased, uh, her deceased sister. Um, and it's like, she's waiting for me and all that, and, you know, and that that's for me kind of that coming of age, but mostly it's from personal experience as well. Um from it um which i guess would just bring me to the first question <laughs> um the film like i said psychological thriller and it deals with mental health and trauma and i kind of really wanted to ask you um because there's not a lot of films i mean now we're seeing more stuff that kind of deals with the mental health issues and trauma in media um but what kind of drove you or brought you to create and tell this narrative uh, with the perspective of mental health and how trauma, uh, people with trauma can kind of uh, experience certain things and let alone kind of throw it in that whole psychological thriller route. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I think you did a great job of summarizing it because <laughs> to be honest, after I've been doing these interviews and like people are like, like, tell us about the movie. And I'm just like, uh, <laughs> where do I begin? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but I think I did, you did a great job at wrapping around. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, I think, so the inspiration for this movie kind of came from the fact that I feel like a lot of uh, Asian Americans, I'm just going to say Asians throughout this interview because Asian Americans no. are just like, kind of mm-hmm. more powerful, but Asians, I feel like, uh, have a hard time describing and experiencing or describing or just kind of reassessing the the trauma they've that many of them has gone through a winter younger mm-hmm. um, and uh, it's something that I've seen many times in films like trauma isn't uh, like a, a new subject in film right it's, it's, yeah. it's everywhere um, but for me I really wanted to showcase uh, a story that might be familiar to many people mm-hmm. with unfamiliar faces and that being Asian American faces on screen. Got you. Um, and I think that was really important to me because I've seen so many movies and great and they're amazing. And, you know, there's a lot of great directors and writers who are teetering this line between trauma and horror and trying to yeah. get this balance between. Um, but many of the times it's just like, I don't see myself in it because it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's predominantly white actors. Yeah. Um, so uh, I just wanted to bring a familiar story but with Asian actors and not really point fingers or like not really make it obvious that this is a Asian film. You know, it's just a movie that happens to have uh, this trauma related story and Mm -hmm. happens to have an Asian family. That's how I kind of package it. Um, And, and, you know, there's, I feel like a lot of my friends and people around me have gone through similar experiences that have kind of like that the movie touches upon. Mm -hmm. And, 
um, I felt like a lot of them, their stories uh, kind of get, get muffled in, you know, with, with uh, other stuff. And I just wanted to bring that kind of story to life a little bit and then just kind of tell the audience that Got you. Well, you're, you're seen, we're all in this together. And uh, hopefully someone will be able to look at, watch the movie and feel like, like seen I'm, and heard. Yeah. Um, yeah like you said in the beginning the the homage to for the, all of those that are hurting um mm-hmm. and that it, it, it really hits home um because as as uh, uh i also like i said uh have dealt with um, some mental health uh issues depression and stuff and that's more like the the one that a lot of media tries to touch on more right uh, instead of like serious trauma like seeing mm-hmm. death and, and whatnot um and it, it was like wow yeah no this is definitely a story that is just so happening like you're it's being told where you can relate and having people uh uh asian and the asian community like kind of see themselves through right um yeah. and i also wanted to ask now that you mentioned that you have had friends or people that you know like deal with these things did you do research for some of the attributes that we see in the film like um the night terrors um some hallucinations yeah. and and stuff like that that we see in the film did you research that did you get it from people that you know and kind of incorporate it or uh what can you tell us about that yeah so the the night terrors and like um sleep paralysis scenes uh, mm-hmm. i get that straight from what i experienced so i mm-hmm. it's i've been pretty chill lately not gonna lie it's been great i've been okay. i've been posting by but um a couple years ago, especially when I was like in the thick of making this movie and writing it, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I had maybe sleep paralysis every other day. Okay. Um, I think I was just, there's just so much on my mind. Um, I just suddenly so dark in here. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, um, uh, I, I, yeah, I, like sleep paralysis is, is pretty normal to me. I would say I get yeah. it a couple times a week. Um, so uh, I just kind of stole directly from what I experienced and there was there were times when like I was working with uh, our sound a post sound team and they're like we're trying to figure out what does what does a silly paralysis sound like right and like, mm-hmm. what does it feel like and I literally told them let me get back to you tomorrow after <laughs> I experience it tonight oh so, god yeah uh, like I went to sleep and I, it started happening and then the first thing that I thought was like holy shit this is scary but the next thought next thought I had I was like okay what do I hear like what is going yeah. on let me let me take advantage of this moment yeah <laughs> exactly. yeah i had that experience while i was having an episode um so i, I kind of took, directly took it from that and like a lot of the other scenes where um not necessarily the, like a horror scenes but mm. I, having a lot of deep conversation with the friends who've had uh issues with maybe like a family member who has committed suicide yeah or um uh, uh, friends with uh, abusive fathers and kind of difficult relationships with their families. I've talked to many friends and many peers who've gone through those experiences and uh, it comes, the movie is from a female perspective, obviously. Yeah. So I, I don't have that in me because I'm a guy. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to do as much justice as I can from the point of view of what I'm able to tell. And hopefully uh, it doesn't feel like I was mansplaining anything. Got you. Um, yeah, I really hope not. But yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't say either because <laughs> I'm a guy as well. Um, but yeah, no, no, I, I, I definitely a lot of I feel like what you had the deep conversations in your own personal experience, which, by the way, you didn't steal. You put you integrated yourself in, in your narrative. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of it. Yeah, I would say um i've had a couple like like you said like um there was points in my life where it was really bad uh sleep paralysis and i've had moments where my anxiety has gone incredibly high to the point where i think i'm either hearing stuff or seeing stuff not to the point of the horror elements that are here but yeah. definitely where it's it trips me out and it scares me sometimes especially when i'm talking with whoever i'm talking um, but it, it definitely hit home and it really felt natural where you definitely got a grasp of that whole, um, experience that people might have. Right. Um, which props to you. Cause it, it was a great film that I watched tonight and I, uh, last night actually. And, um, 
one thing on a lighter note that I did want to mention was the horror aspect. Um, mm-hmm. Although I don't think it has the genre listed in its IMDb, um, it does have elements for those viewers that haven't seen it yet and are still, for whatever reason, watching with spoilers the, this interview. Um, mm-hmm. I kind of wanted to ask you about that. Uh, do you normally like go through that whole... Uh, uh, horror aspect for some of your work or do you even plan to go full horror in the future um it's it's i i do love thriller and horror um, mm-hmm. like you know it's something that you watch so you can like experience something for like yeah. an hour two hours right yeah i really enjoy it um <laughs> but i don't know if this is the route that i want to take of course like continually you know i, I think yeah. i do enjoy being in this area and like being able to explore the different kinds of uh like the thrills that you can give the audience by also like at the same time like kind of telling a very heartfelt story mm-hmm. um, but i think i'm just more driven to the drama aspect of of, of, of the, especially this film mm-hmm. um, and just kind of horror just kind of happen to tag along at the very end and kind of yeah be able to tell specific moments really quickly without having to explain what's going on um i think i'm more of a drama kind of guy than gotcha. what i want to make uh, as, yeah. as a, yeah i would love to see more of your drama work um yeah <laughs> i just wanted to mention the horror elements elements because not a lot of new day and age horror films like get my anxiety pumping and uh-huh. this one like it, like in a good way normally i wouldn't want my anxiety activated yeah. but on this one i was like oh this is doing its, its job like um okay. just showcasing the thriller aspect and the psychological and i think maybe also because some of the areas i could relate to as well so it was like a, a really uh well wrote and and um shot film um mm-hmm. and for my last question i guess just for funds um I know as a director, when you, like you said, when you're doing these interviews, some of the questions can get repetitive, right? And hopefully some of these kind of were like out of the box, um, but especially this one. But also when you answer some questions, say like you ask you, oh, uh, what's your favorite thing about the movie, right? You would say, oh, I just love the entire film itself, right? It's a story that I really want to write, whatnot. Um, What would you say was your favorite scene? Like absolute, like I wanted to get this and I got it to what I would say was perfect for me. Uh, Or at least to capture what I was trying to capture. Good question. (laughs) <laughs> i don't nah i feel like um i think the part i think the scene that i really enjoy the most mm-hmm. out of this this project i think is when when it's kind of towards the end of the film when everything kind of gets wrapped up and kind of get to get explained yeah. and the mom runs over or like hedging is on the ground outside mm-hmm. of the farm and the mom runs over and she gives him a hug and then there's like yeah well in the music where it's like everything is kind of coming together yeah um, i really i think that's like the one moment where i feel something <laughs> <laughs> because uh i think one of the d- very difficult things about making i mean making a, a film is, is is a tremendous you know it's 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 an, it's, a, it's a group effort by so many people yeah right yeah. um and it's so difficult to kind of uh take a, take an idea make it make it an hour and a half thing um so like my editor and i we would watch it so many times right you know you're editing a version one and then a month later you're like at version 25 and yeah. you know you watch it so many times that like sometimes the effect of it kind of fades away yeah uh, that's what we learned um Yedin and i or and my editor uh like a lot of a lot of the horror scares horror jumps we didn't know if it was working because we've seen it so many times yeah so, there are many times you have to like show it to a friend, like cold turkey without letting them know anything about it. And yeah, like yeah. moments they jump or like at one moments they fear something, feel something. Mm-hmm. Um, so the entire film, <laughs> I would watch it and QC it like every other night. Yeah. Um, one moment that would get me feeling anything would be when that mom comes over to hug. Uh, okay. And she's just like, she's like, I'm here for you. It's okay. It's going to be okay. Yeah, it's okay. You're safe. And yeah. 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 I think it's just every, I think it's just that moment. I feel something every other moment, to be honest, I don't feel anything. <laughs> Got I'm you. Watching, like, I've seen this a million times and oh, yeah, yeah, it's been, it's, it's, it's gone to the best place, place it can be. 
mm-hmm. but yeah, so many parts of it was so rough yeah no that was, it was really a good part it's just i think that that uh seeing uh the love of a parent like fully show because sometimes parents uh, i i feel like for minorities because my because uh, i'm mexican my mexican mom and dad don't really show their love like that unless it's like a very serious moment yeah. where they actually like oh my god you're i'm glad you're okay yeah, yeah, yeah. um so it's like stuff like that i i get it. it it really does bring emotion um i'm not sure if you've seen yet uh but like uh everything everywhere all at once dude that's the just the last third act really got me crying and i'm like why am i crying like i I, I thought i was doing good this past month um and just those scenes yeah no i completely understand uh, uh, michelle yo's character is like you have gotten fat yeah yeah it's like (laughs) the whole insult (laughs) stuff and it's like at the end it's like but you say all these mean things why then you say this you're confusing me um but yeah no it it really hits it it hits the soft spot that one would have um but yeah i mean that's basically all my questions that i had if you uh i do want to like for anyone that's willing to view i do recommend it i don't know if it's out in public domain yet um or if it's still doing festival circuits it is just so we had our world premiere at Panic Fest uh, like two weeks ago, and then mm-hmm. we're at LA premiere in two days on May twelfth, and then we're having a Bay Area premiere like a day after or something. Okay, um, and then uh, hopefully some other premieres in the next couple months. But got you. Please catch it at the festival virtual screenings or in person if you can. There you go. Yeah. So, I mean, it's honestly worth the ticket admission because a lot of these festivals are virtual. So if mm-hmm. you're able to get it virtually or if you're in the area for the festivals, definitely go and watch it because it's it's it, it really hits a nice soft spot between the whole psychological thriller and like the the kind of figuring out trauma and it kind of allows you to reflect on your own stuff if you're dealing with items um but yeah i mean thank you so much for for uh, allowing me to interview you real quick uh, and shoot these four questions at you um i don't know if you want to plug anything that you might have planned your social media the film social media if it has any yeah um the the, the instagram handle for donning is donning underscore film very original i know <laughs> and my personal one i don't know how to say it because it's just like a, a string of letters gotcha. um, but hopefully you can find it maybe you can just uh, I'll, I'll try <laughs> i'll hit up will and uh, uh um to send me your info if i can but i'll probably i've gathered enough uh i i wouldn't call it stalking but i've gathered enough stalking skills to get information out uh for my interviewees um but yeah thank you again so much for joining and that Mm -hmm. has been it for this interview and i'll catch you guys on the next one check out the film dawning if you can and yeah have a good one everybody